News 13's Frank Faboni joins us with tonight's exclusive story. Strickland left the property when he couldn't get inside, but he didn't go far. When police arrived, they confronted him out here on the road. One unidentified driver followed the chief's vehicle off the highway and all the way to the Anka Candler Fire Station. Shelter officials say this is a safe way to surrender a pet. Without it, people have left animals in airtight boxes, have chained them to the fence, and have even thrown them over the barbed wire. Sheriff Duncan, acting more like a parent than sheriff, took his son back to the scene where he made his escape. The sheriff says his intentions were to call police once he knew where the suspect might be. Police say Bridgers was in an interview room here at the station when he got up and walked out the station doors. A family of three, as you see, with a $50,000 income would have a premium of $657, a tax credit of $315. This is News 13 at 6. Heavy snow blankets parts of the mountains. Big fat flakes fell most of the day in Jackson County. And you can see those big flakes, they really stacked up. And it wasn't just the snow. The wind out there is really driving down that wind chill. We'll have much more on how the snow is affecting people. But first, let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Jason Boyer. All right, thanks, Jason. Well, many viewers in the higher elevations have written to us saying that they've gotten as much as nine inches of snow. So we went to take a look ourselves. News 13's Rex Hodge is live from Jackson County. And Rex, what's it like there? A reminder, if your school or daycare closes because of the weather, you can find out with a News 13 text alert. Just go to WLOS.com to sign up. The notice will be sent directly to your cell phone. Snow also dusted parts of Asheville, continuing the freezing start to spring. The light accumulation left a touch of white in this East Asheville neighborhood. The bone chilling wind also left its mark. And for some, it was a shocking start to the season. I don't think somebody got the memo about the spring thing, do you? <laughs> I think you're right. Many are anxious to finally see some spring-like weather. Tonight, the Asheville City Council voted to raise fees on water, garbage, and parking rates. It's all in an effort to offset a $1.9 million budget deficit. News 13's Mario Boone has been at the meeting all afternoon. He's joining us now live. And Mario, how much will the rates increase? All right, thanks, Mario. Now to continuing coverage of a murder case in Henderson County. Today, a judge refused to lower the bond of a man accused of killing his girlfriend and dumping her body on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Jermaine Glover is charged with first-degree murder in the death of Misty Carter. He went to trial and a juror, jury deadlocked earlier this month. Today, Glover asked for a reduction in his million-dollar bond, but he was denied. He'll remain in jail while waiting for the new trial. Glover's family members say that's unfair, but Misty Carter's mother told the court Glover doesn't deserve to be out on bond. Prosecutors and Glover's attorney say they're ready to present evidence in a new trial. The judge set the retrial for April 22nd when the court begins a new term. A reward is being offered in Rutherford County tonight to find the person or people who are stealing road signs. The county's Crime Stopper says the signs are vital for first responders to find homes and businesses. The stolen signs could slow response times and endanger lives, according to officials, and they're offering up to $2,000 for information. If you know anything, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 286-8477. I just think it would just create another hardship. Taking steps to raise revenue. Coming up in tonight's Reality Check, why business owners aren't pumped up about a new plan to tax more services. Local business owners say a new plan to raise more revenue for the state would cut into their bottom line. Lawmakers are considering expanding the sales tax to include services that are now tax-free. How some businesses and consumers feel about the idea is tonight's Reality Check. Supporters say adding service taxes while lowering income taxes would create a more sustainable and fair tax system. But so far, it's only an idea that hasn't yet made it into any legislation. If you have an idea for a reality check, you can write me at realitycheck at WLOS.com. Hard to believe we're talking about wind chills as we get close to Easter. <laughs> and remember, remember the snow in October from Superstorm Sandy? Yeah. So everything on the bookends of winter has been active in the middle. Of Backwards, much, you could yeah. say. Just different. <laughs> different. <laughs> Well, viewers have been flooding our Facebook page with pictures of the snow. That's right, and these are some of our oh, favorite snow sculptures we've seen. Holly Cox sent us this one, a snow bunny just in time for Easter. 
And Ashley Craven <laughs> sent us one of her daughter, Craven, uh, with her snowman in Maggie Valley. And I like that snowman's hat. We're learning more details about Appalachian State's move to Division I football. Stan has the update next. Hate that for State. Yeah. Oh, they're mm. going to lose a couple of good seniors, too. So Absolutely. That'll be tough. Be hard. Mm -hmm. All right. Quick look at the weather. How about this? <laughs> it's not quick when it comes to snowfall, okay. unfortunately. It continues <laughs> to pile up, and it will continue Could to be next to good. impossible to find eggs in all of that snow. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> if it, it doesn't just, melt. You know, hey. But it, it hopefully <laughs> melts off rather quickly. <laughs> okay. <myself, so. laughs> Thanks for joining us. For more local news, flip over to News 13 on My 40 at 630. This is News 13 at 6. News 13 has learned graphic details about an alleged rape that led to charges against two Asheville Tourist baseball players. News 13's Megan Sharing is live at the Buncombe County Courthouse. A McDowell County man will spend at least two years in prison for an accident that killed an elderly woman last summer. 28-year-old Patrick Devaney pleaded guilty to one count of felony death by vehicle. Troopers say Devaney was impaired when he crossed the center line on US 221 and hit a van head-on. Pauline Lale, a passenger in the back seat of the van, died at the scene. Devaney was also ordered to pay more than $6,000 in restitution to the victims. Tips from the public help officers track down a wanted man in McDowell County. As we reported last night, 24-year-old Shane Riddle was wanted for felony child abuse. The sheriff's office says he was arrested this morning. This fall, hunters will be able to use a once outlawed device on their guns. North Carolina lawmakers approved the use of suppressors while hunting. They had heard about hunters hearing loss and about neighbors complaints of loud noise from gunshots. Wildlife officials say hunters need a concealed weapons permit and must follow certain procedures to use a suppressor. Submit to a background check. The suppressors also require a federal tax payment of $200. They can be used by hunters beginning October the 1st. Well, the weekend is here. The weather is nice. Puts That's a right. smile on your face, doesn't yeah. it? Ready for the weekend, hoping we're going to stay dry, Jason. Yeah. It is the perfect place to cool off on a hot summer day. We are talking about Discovery Island in Simpsonville, and that's our hometown hotspot. News 13's Evan Donovan is live at the water park. And Evan, are you ready to take a dip yet? He's Hard having work. too much fun, yeah. isn't he? Yeah, I don't call Tough that job. work at Somebody's got to do it, yeah, though. Yeah, that's right. Well, folks across the Carolinas are taking advantage of a tax-free weekend. The sales tax holiday kicked off today, and that means shoppers can something for our annual Tools for Schools drive. News 13 is teaming up with Evelyn Charities, Clear Channel, and Ingalls to provide school supplies for local kids. Next Thursday, we'll be live at the Ingalls on Tunnel Road, but there are also drop-off locations in every county, and everything you donate will stay in your community. And to find out what's needed and where to go, go to WLOS.com. We would not have had this animal shelter if it hadn't been for Dr. Brooks and the Friends of the Animal Shelter. It's a storybook ending. Next, how our person of the week gave abandoned animals a chance to find a home. Stray and neglected animals now have a new beginning in Transylvania County. As News 13's John Lee reports, our person of the week was a key player in building a state-of-the-art shelter that's long overdue. Oh. That's I know they're excited. Wonderful, isn't it? I hope yeah. the weather's great for the long overdue for them for the event on Saturday yeah. at eleven. I hope so. Did you uh, hear Saturday, that? Jason? Yeah. Saturday morning, on 11 on. yes, eleven o'clock. Yeah. Yes, should be good. Excellent. Right. Should be good. Should be Very good. nice. Thank All you. Right. <laughs> we won't know how to behave. I was going to say, it looks like a pretty nice weekend. <laughs> yeah. Well, July turned out to be a banner month for a local animal park. The WNC Nature Center saw record attendance in July with nearly fifteen thousand guests so far this year. The center has welcomed some sixty-eight thousand people, possibly putting it on track for the best year in history. We start our prep football previews tonight with last year's Cinderella Madison. Next in sports, Stan says, this year the Patriots don't consider themselves upstarts but playoff contenders. 59, that's what you guys shoot, right? Oh, I mean, exactly. Good, not me. But not through 18. That's some of Stan's, <laughs> through four. That's Stan's competition right there. <laughs> All right, let's talk about that weekend forecast. And the good news is if you have to wise in the mid-80s. Did right. you pay them to say that? <laughs> <laughs> For more local news, slip over to My40. News 13's Frank Carboni joins us. It's really surprising, Frank, to people in both communities. And even more surprised that troopers say that he was driving his marked fire department vehicle while extremely intoxicated. 
The Chief's SUV sits where troopers say he finally came to a stop outside the Anka Candler Fire Station yesterday morning. 57-year-old Timothy Rayburn was charged with DWI with a blood alcohol level almost four times above the legal limit. His BAC was .30. The Highway Patrol says it was drivers on Interstate 40 near Swannanoa who were the first to report the Chief's marked vehicle driving erratically down the highway. Several drivers followed the SUV, calling police and the highway patrol along the way. One unidentified driver followed the chief's vehicle off the highway and all the way to the Anka Candler Fire Station. Court records reveal he almost hit another vehicle and the guardrail. Was that surprising? Very surprising. All in his marked vehicle. I've been doing this 20 years and this is the first time that I've dealt with this type of situation. The fire department board chairman released a statement saying the chief was immediately suspended pending an investigation and at this point it's considered a personnel matter. He was elected in 2009. Rayburn is vice mayor in the town of Black Mountain and up for re-election in November. A lifelong public servant who retired from the Black Mountain Fire Department in 2008. He's been very committed to the town of Black Mountain, committed to uh, the fire department and to the public in general and, uh, and he's done a lot of good things for the town. A history of service now tarnished by his arrest. All we can do is just pray and let the Lord handle it. Rayburn's driver's license was automatically revoked for 30 days. He was released in a $1,000 secured bond. Attempts to reach him at his home were unsuccessful. News 13's Frank Forboni joins us. And so, Frank, how did this happen? The suspect had several outstanding arrest warrants and was brought in for questioning. When no one was watching, he apparently got up and walked out. Police released this surveillance photograph of Jesse Bridgers last night and asked the public for help in finding him. He was brought into the Asheville Police Department because he was wanted for a breaking and entering and suspected in several others in West Asheville. Police say Bridgers was in an interview room here at the station when he got up and walked out the station doors. It's unbelievable. I think the, um, the custody measures probably need to be re examined. It seems like somebody should be watching him. He should be secured while he's there. Bridgers was wanted on several felony warrants, including larceny of a weapon. He was also recently released from the Buncombe County Detention Center and was charged this morning with misdemeanor escape. Some find it hard to believe someone could down walk out of police, police custody. Got up and walked down. <laughs> wow. Somebody is not doing their due diligence, I, I would guess. That's surprising. I'm I don't know how he got out of there. <laughs> the suspect's escape comes a week after another embarrassing incident for police. A patrol car was stolen from outside a substation in Skyland after an officer left the keys in the ignition. A police spokesman commenting about the escape says a review has already begun to address actions by staff and identify any policy or procedures that were not followed to ensure it doesn't happen again. Police say Bridgers was not considered armed or dangerous, but this isn't the first time this has happened. A man charged with two murders, rape and arson, escaped from the station in 1995 when he told officers he had to go to the bathroom. Luckily, he too was captured just a few blocks away.